Hello there, everybody. My name is Clover, and welcome back to another episode of my Hardcore Let's Play series. In today's video, we are building an iron farm that'll help set us up for the future of this series. And we are also taking our first trip into the nether. And let's just say it gets a little bit hectic. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. There are two things here that you have probably noticed straight away. Let's address the most obvious one first, and that is that I changed my skin. Let me give you a better view. I changed my skin. And I actually made this one all by myself. I wanted a skin that looked like how I do in real life, and I figured that I am probably the best person to make that skin. But yes, this is going to be the skin that I wear from this point forward, so I hope you guys like it. The second thing that you probably noticed is that I am nowhere near my base. I am in the middle of nowhere. And there's a good reason for that. In today's episode, I want to build an iron farm. But not just any iron farm, I want to build the Tango Tech Mega Iron Farm. This thing pumps out four iron golems every 30 seconds. That is crazy. But in order to get such crazy stats, you gotta pay the price in resources. Specifically, this iron farm requires 12 villagers, and I simply don't have that many. So I've chosen to build my iron farm in the spot in between these two villages. That way I can have easy access to villagers and not use up all of my own. I actually found these villages during my buried treasure and sunken ship extravaganza back in episode one. Just over that hill is where I found the coast armor trims and the moss, so. The more you know, I guess. Off camera, I have been gathering up some of the resources that I need to build this iron farm, but I have run into a problem. I need comparators. And for those of you who don't know, comparators require something that I don't have yet. Nether quartz, which is only found in the nether, which means we've, uh, we've got to go to the nether. Now, even though we've got a full portal just over there, you can barely see it. I wanted to go ahead and turn this lava pit into some obsidian and bring it back home and go into the nether there. I want to connect that portal that's next to where our iron farm is going to go to the nether, but I want to actually do our farming near my base. So that way I can, you know, sort of set up a bit of a nether hub. And 14. There we go. All right, we are back at the village now. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves up some gold armor. Where is my gold? There it is. Okay. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves up a gold helmet. And let's also go ahead and enchant it. Got Unbreaking 3, Fire Protection 1, or Protection 1. Let's go with Unbreaking 3. Wow. You know, the Fire Protection in the Nether, that's a pretty good helmet. I'm not upset. We're also going to go ahead and grab some safety blocks here. We're also going to put away our tools that we don't need. Okay. I think we're ready. I am super scared of going to the nether in every single hardcore world that I have ever played in. I haven't ever actually died in the nether, but it is so scary to me. It's like the first real test of the world. Now we're gonna go ahead and build our temporary nether portal just out here in the middle of this field. Somewhere where it's far away from everything and I don't really have to worry about the zombie pigmen. Well, that's not right. See, this is what the nether does to you. It makes you forget how to play Minecraft. I should uh, probably go and get some more torches. That way I don't get lost. Okay, more torches acquired. Let's go to the nether. Here we go. No turning back now. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. This is the worst possible spawn I could have gotten. You're joking. I don't even have a bow. Okay, well, I guess we're tunneling. Maybe I should have brought my shovel. What is this? All right, guys, that's it from the nether. I wanna go home now, I'm done. Well, it looks like I've got to brave the Soul Sand Valley. Oh, and there's a red forest right next to us. This is horrible. 
I'm not having fun anymore. I want to go home. Well, um, I don't really know what to do here. Really, it feels like my only option is to just go that way and hope that there is something. But honestly, you know, really all that I need is that. Do I really have to brave the nether right now? No, I think that we should do the thing that everyone wants us to do while we're here. Okay, what do we have over this way? All right, that looks promising. I feel like I'm so high up. Man, this is just the worst. I don't know what to do or where to go. I want to like keep exploring the soul sand, but I'm scared that I'm gonna find another fortress in there and I don't want another fortress in a soul sand valley. I can't handle that in hardcore. I can hardly handle that in survival. Let's try tunneling through here. Hopefully we don't run into lava. Oh no, 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 that is not what we're doing today. Thank you. Definitely not. Oh my. I want to go home. I really, really, really want to go home. Okay. Let's try going up. We'll go over. Okay, that goes like all the way down there. I'm terrified. I think this is actually the most scared I have been in the nether in a while. This is a soul sand valley bastion too. These things are terrifying. Literally the last place you want to be in a hardcore world. Can they spawn on here? Should I not be building this way? I genuinely don't know, so I'm just gonna go this way. I'm a little scared about these guys with the crossbow seeing me. And that skeleton down there. Can I please just find another fortress so I can go home? And can the nether fortress be in a biome that doesn't make me want to cry? That would also be really nice. How do I get down? I feel like I need to go to the left past that bastion, and I don't want to. If I, if I stay far enough away from it, I should be fine. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna boat. And drop. Okay, let's tunnel again. I'm really afraid of running into a lava pocket while doing this, but it's our best bet. I feel like I can smell a nether fortress. One has to be nearby. Is that another bat? That's another bastion! I don't want one! I don't have a whole lot of pickaxe durability left. I don't want to go towards that bastion, but once again, I think that's my only option. So. I think we go home. I think we go home. We, um, build our iron farm and we come back. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to come back with more pickaxe durability. And hopefully I'll have some better luck next time. Okay, well... That was a uh, pretty unsuccessful run, if I do say so myself. I mean, we got the thing that we went in there for, but I am really unsatisfied. All right, so it's been a little bit of time since the last clip. I took a bit of a break, had a snack, and I also went and got a new pickaxe because mine was about to break. Which, by the way, this new pickaxe that I got is absolutely insane. But I am now ready to go back into the nether and hopefully find a fortress this time. If I don't, I will probably start crying, I'm not gonna lie. I also got this bow from my Fletcher, but I don't have any arrows for it, so hopefully I can kill some skeletons in the Soul Sand Valley and get some there. All right, in we go. So I think right now I wanna go off in this direction, the exact opposite of the way that we went earlier. I wanna go off in this direction and hopefully we can find something over here. I forgot my shovel again. Can I get returned to Sunder? Ow. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Okay. Finally. All right. What is the best way to get over there? I think really just bridging and hoping. All right, first place, Rod. 
You know, hopefully I can find some chests while I'm here and this isn't just the worst nether fortress that I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if that's how lava works, but yeah, we'll ignore that one. I've already got some soul sand at home, so I don't need to grab any of this. Some saddles, I will gladly take those. Somehow I have not encountered a single wither skeleton, and I'm just confused about that. Is that another one? I think that's another one right next to it. Well, I might as well go explore that one as well. Perhaps that one will actually have some wither skeletons. Who knows? Oh, there we go. Already doing better on this one. Oh, goodness. Alright, it's these guys that I really don't like. Let's run, let's run, let's run. Alright, we're gonna keep running. Piggies are still right there. Yeah, you know, I think I'm just gonna go home. I came, I saw, I conquered, and that's all that I really could ask for. While I'm here, I would like to do some trading with you, so... Come and get it. What are you gonna give me? Some crying obsidian. That is not really what I wanted. A book? Soul Speed 2? I'll take it. We are gonna really quickly do an advancement, alright? So, how about we come over here and take this off? Nice. And I'll put that back on. I don't want it anymore. Where are you going? was that? What the heck? Thanks. I'm gonna leave now. You know, honestly, I'm not that upset with what we got today. We got three saddles, some diamond horse armor, three diamonds. We got two blaze rods, which, you know, not anywhere near enough, but it's something. Some ender pearls and a soul speed two and soul speed one book. Not bad for our first. Well, Actually, I guess this is the second. It's not, it's not bad for our second trip into the nether. With our little excursion to the nether out of the way, we can go ahead and craft up our seven redstone comparators that we need. There we go. And there we go. Everything that we need for this project is currently in this chest. At least I hope everything that I need for this project is currently in this chest. Except for, obviously, the villagers and the zombies, which I'll get when I need them. <laughs> At least I hope everything that I need for this project is currently in this chest. Yeah, so everything that I needed was in fact not in that chest. If you look closely at the contents of this chest, you will notice that there are four pistons there. Those four pistons are supposed to be sticky pistons, which I have none of. As a result, I wasted about an hour of my time live on Twitch Searching for sticky pistons. Here is that footage. I just realized that I'm actually stupid. These are supposed to be sticky pistons, not normal pistons. So, um, we have a little bit of a side quest that we need to do right now because I am not very intelligent. <laughs> so I guess we're gonna wait until night, which is a long time. We're gonna wait until night and then and, and then we'll make them sticky pistons, I guess. I don't know where a swamp is, so I hope it's... I think it's a full moon where... Is it a full moon where slimes spawn? We're testing my Minecraft knowledge that I just straight up don't have at this point in time. Is it new moons or is it full moons that slimes spawn in? I genuinely don't know. Hey, how's it going, bro? Um, I'm gonna actually Google that really quick because I don't want to waste my time if no slime are gonna spawn. Okay, so they never spawn during a new moon, and spawn more frequently during a full moon. Um, can- Another question, can they actually spawn in any biome? 
Okay, well, I'm wasting my time, but you know what? It's okay. It's all right. We'll see if we can find a, a swamp, because I need one, so might as well go searching anyway. You know what else I want to find? I want to find a cherry blossom biome, because I have not seen one of those in a long time. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> okay. Okay, that is one thing accomplished. Is it just the one? If it's just the one, that'll be really, really, really funny. Okay, well, I need to write down the coordinates of this. So that way I can come back here and eventually make another portal here. A jungle. I already found one of those, though. Although, if there's a jungle over there, theoretically, there could be a swamp over there based off of temperatures or something i don't know also if i can find any jungle temples that'd be pretty cool too i haven't found one of those yet my jungle at home is like really small so it doesn't have anything i'm gonna go back into this jungle i'm gonna look to see if there is any what are they called jungle temples because those have sticky pistons in them. So if I can find some sticky pistons, then I don't even have to find slime. I can just go home. We're just gonna dig in. Uh, and then it's this side? Yeah. Oh, it only has two. Oh no, it has three. Okay, so I just need one more. Two diamonds. Sick. I will gladly accept those diamonds, thank you. And I will also gladly take these three sticky pistons. That is the only reason why I am here. So, yeah. Those sticky pistons took about an hour of my time. And at the end of the day, I didn't even find a swamp biome. So the next time that I need sticky pistons, I have to do that all again. But it's okay, it doesn't matter, because we got the sticky pistons, and now we can build our farm. So, it's time for a time lapse. And we are back. So as you guys just saw, I sat down during a live stream and built the iron farm that you now see behind me. However, as you've probably noticed by now, it's not quite done. We are clearly missing some villagers up in there and obviously our zombies and probably even more obviously our killing chamber is not there. So yes, at this current time, we need to get in our remaining villagers and two zombies and then build that killing chamber and we're all ready and good to go. What I need to do right now is find some villagers and bring them on over to the farm. And last one, in you go. And now with that out of the way, we can work on getting them up to the top. Have fun. All right, one in. Let's go. Now to do that two more times. All right, now we can block off this up at the top. We didn't even use it, but it's all right. And repeat this whole process on the other side. You know, while we're getting these villages in a place, I think we should go ahead and smelt up some sand. Because I think I want to build the killing chambers out of glass. That way I can, I don't know, see inside. Alright, let's get that smelting into glass. And hopefully that should be done. It definitely will be by the time I finish getting those guys in there. 
2,000 years later. Alrighty, so we have successfully put in all of our villagers. Each one of these cells has three villagers in it. And that means that we are ready to put in our zombies. Now, as you can see, I've already built a staircase up to the first zombie containment cell. But I think I actually want to build our killing chambers first. Just so that way, if any iron golems happen to spawn while I'm getting the zombies up there, hopefully they will fall straight into the killing chamber and I won't have to worry about it. So let's grab our glass. So we're actually going to need a couple of different coordinates. We're going to want to make sure that we are directly underneath these trap doors. Those are not trap doors, those are fence gates. We're going to want to make sure that we are directly under the fence gates, so I'll need the coordinates for that. And we also want to make sure that we go exactly one block out past this little wall here, so I'll need the coordinates of that. Alrighty, so we have to go to uh, 673 down there, 691 on this side, and 711 on that side. All right, 673, and then 1691, so right here, and finally 1711, so right here. And now we can go ahead and place two blocks on either side, excuse me cow. We can place two blocks on either side to make this five blocks long, or five blocks wide rather, and connect everything. Now I'm almost positive that the two stacks of glass that I made are not going to be enough, but... I figured we'd see how far it would get us and go from there. Oh yeah, not even close. Okay, let's go get some more sand. Now, for our killing chamber, I have realized that there is something that I need that I, once again, did not have in the chest at the beginning. So I need to go quickly grab that, but I need to travel a little bit in order to do so. So let's head back to our base. And from here, we can make our way over to spawn, because what I'm needing is actually right next to our spawn location. So, if we just head around this way to the other side of the mountain that we spawned on, we will find some ice. I am specifically looking for packed ice, but honestly, I don't know if you can get that without crafting it. I don't work with ice very frequently, so... Maybe we'll just end up getting some blue ice and some normal ice and combining them. Honestly, who knows? P A C. Oh, okay. Oh, that is packed ice. All right, I got the 40 pieces that I need, and now we can go back home. Editor's note I have literally no idea why I thought that I needed 42, because I probably only used about 20. Back to the iron farm we go. All right, so while we're waiting for the rest of our glass, let's go ahead and create the hoppers and the chest that we're gonna need for this. Now, since I am really, really, really low on iron, I am only gonna have the bare minimum at this point in time. We're not gonna have any fancy storage system or anything yet, so sorry for the letdown. But what we can go ahead and do is create two hoppers, and then each side of our farm will have a double chest to support its output. All right. So now on the inside here, we can go ahead and create an infinite water source. Use that to fill all the way across. And then just before this water ends, so on this row right here, we can place down some packed ice. And on top of that, we will put down stone pressure plates. Then we can grab some more water and put two water sources, one in that corner and one in that corner. And then right on this block space right here, we can start another line of packed ice. And once again, place those stone pressure plates on top. And finally, we can recreate that pattern once more. So just letting you guys know, I realized that you are not supposed to bring the far side out by one block. Otherwise, your water sources at the end will not work out. All right, let's try that again. All right, there we go. Done right that time. And then where all this water is flowing, we can go ahead and bring this out. One more glass block and then one more packed ice with another pressure plate on top. We can make a little box right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and build this exact same chamber on this side. All right, next up we are going to need 16 signs. We're gonna place those in the super, super weird pattern that goes like this. So it creates a little like 
cocoon. And eventually we're going to put lava in here. Hopefully I still have some left over at this area where I covered the lava with water to make it obsidian. Does not seem like I'm going to get lucky. All right, into the nether. Oh. Not my shield. All right, that was a little spooky, but it's okay. Did not die. All right, I'm about to go into this nether fortress without a shield, which is probably one of the dumbest things that I've done in a while, but... Oh well. And run away. Okay. There we go. We got our lava. Maybe not in the smartest way, but we got our lava and now we're leaving. All right. And with our fancy lava, we can go ahead and place it right here and hopefully this works. Perfect. Perfect. That little overhang right there is totally normal. Don't worry about it. Now, unfortunately, I did just sleep, so I have an entire day to kill before I can get my zombies. So, what do I do? Well, first, we can go ahead and set up our storage system. So, how about we make like a little, a little trail that connects these two. We'll have to box that in to make sure that nothing escapes us. And then we can place our water, put in some more ice and pressure plates right there. And then we can have our chests with the hoppers going into it and the one more row down there. All right, the sun is setting. All right, so I've got 18 seeds in my inventory. I don't have any name tags, so this is going to have to do as a way of making our zombie not despawn. All right, there's our first zombie. Are you going to pick up a seed? Yes, you are. Perfect. Okay, you are gonna come up these nice little stairs that I made. Aren't they so nice? Okay, don't mess this up. All right, now how do I get them in there? <laughs> like that. Well, that's one in place. Why are you burning? Oh my God, he's gonna burn before I get there, isn't he? Yep. Well, that was tragic. I kind of forgot the trap doors just don't block the sun. Like, that seems like something that they should do and they just don't, so. All right, we're gonna get two in tonight, all right? That's a promise to myself. Perfect, all right, we got one. All right, don't mess this up. All right, and now we can break that, replace it with that, and this side is all good to go. All right, now let's get our second zombie in. Oh, well that was easy. I forgot the trap door. Who knew? Now that both of our zombies are in, we can actually go ahead and place our water sources right here, placing them one apart so that way they're infinite. All right, I think our iron farm is complete. I guess we'll find out here in a second when I turn it on. All right, it is time for the moment of truth. It is time to see if this thing works. I'm a little scared about the hopper clock. I had a lot of issues with building it when I was doing my live stream. Uh, so, you know, I'm not fully confident that it works, but I think it might. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take a stack and a half, so we got 64 and 32. And we're gonna throw that in there. And hopefully once that clock goes down, it should raise up both of those guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get down here before an iron golem can spawn on me. Once that hopper clock finishes, we should see these guys rise up. Yep. okay. And now we should see, hopefully, four iron golems. There's one. There's two, there's three, there's four. <gasps> it works, oh my God, <laughs> it works. I wasn't actually expecting it to work. 
Okay, and now that these guys are dead, we should see another wave, hopefully, since those trap doors are still up. Sorry, pistons are still up. Okay, we got another three. That's awesome. Okay, I'm so happy right now. Oh my goodness. So yeah, if you're lucky, you should get two whole spawn cycles in the time that the zombies are visible to the villagers. So it should, at max capacity, spawn eight every single stack and a half through that hopper clock. And look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay. I am thrilled right now. And also the cool thing about this farm is it is stackable. So you could make a bunch of these little villager cells on top of each other. I don't think I need that. I might need it one day. I might add to this one day. But for right now, I don't think I need it. So I think that my next step is to build like a little AFK hut. So let's build our little AFK spot. We're gonna do just a hole in the ground because honestly, I don't AFK a lot in hardcore because it's scary. And then on the inside here, let's have a iron door because we can. And then we can do some ladders going up. A little trap door right there. We can place our bed back there again. Put some blast furnaces in here. Put in our entertainment system. And once again, our entertainment system. And a cauldron, because I had one. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the life. <laughs> All right, I really need to make these walls pretty now. I think that to decorate the inside of our AFK spot, because, you know, honestly, I, I do want it to be kind of pretty. I think that to decorate the inside of it, I am going to be using dark oak, granite, and some, what is it called? And some moss, because I really, really, really like that color palette. All right, so how about on the walls right here, we add in these dark oak logs, and how about we strip those? Just because. Let's do the same thing with this, and also right here, and right here. And now around the sides, we can just go ahead and throw in some granite. And how about we texturize this a little bit because it kind of looks like a prison cell. And now up at the ceiling, let's replace that with the moss. Then we can do a little bit of decoration with some of these moss carpets. Also, we can add in some of the cobblestone and mossy cobblestone that we brought. And there we go. She's pretty ugly, but it's all right because it's not as bad as just a stone box. Let's take a look and see how much iron I got just from building that room. Oh my God, we're already almost done with the entire first row. I actually have no words. I am so proud of myself for getting this to work. And with the completion of our iron farm, I think that about does it for this episode, guys. So thank you so much as always for watching the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this very chaotic episode of Hardcore Minecraft. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and consider hitting the subscribe button down below. It's completely free and it really helps support me in the channel. With that being said, make sure you take care of yourself and others, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye